Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to like cross over that like kind of you know weird parky and uh, try to maintain a normal human being you know status with my daughter and not imprint too much on her. But um, yeah, it's fun to go visit these national parks with her. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about Black Canyon of the Gunnison. How many people in this room have been to this park? Quite a few. All right. Well, for those of you who haven't, it's amazing. It's as you can see in the photo. It's um, it's really, really extreme and uh, quite a wonderful spot. It's located in Western Colorado. Um, and after you know, hearing Josh's talk, um, we're actually going way back and talking about print products. So all of these maps are on print. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a majority of, uh, of visitors that go to Black Canyon visit and experience the park by driving a couple of uh, roads along each side of the rim. and they walk a short distance and then pull off and go to these overlooks that just kind of peer over these thousands of foot cliff ledges and really, I mean, put your stomach in your throat and uh, give you a, a sense of, of adventure in life. Some people actually take it even further and uh, descend into the canyon. There's permits to access the wilderness in the backcountry by descending down a few routes that go down into the canyon. Um, and then there's also a lot of climbers It's a really, um, uh, epic spot for people to to actually descend down and then have to climb out, which is kind of unique in, in a lot of uh, climbing spaces. So um, the maps that I produced were part of the Unigrid brochure program, which we do for uh, 417 park units throughout the country. And I'm starting here with what uh, our colleagues typically call side two, but um, since I'm in a room full of cartographers here, this is side one today. <laughs> um, <laughs> And ultimately, I, I thought that this would be a fun project to kind of highlight because it uh, focuses on a wider range of, of cartographic products. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it has a, kind of a diverse you know, approach here, and I think it's fun to kind of show what we did. And it's you know, slightly innovative in, in some respects. Uh, side, or I'll say the cover, not side one today, um, is typically kind of a space for more interpretive um, themes for the park. And this, uh, this side, I did a 3D diagram that I'll get into later in the talk. So whenever I start a project like this, I like to kind of dive deep into the archives and see what's done before. Um, and this I found, it's dated 2000, but I think it goes way back further than that. And you know, it has the standard uh, NPS elements, the kind of green ribbon around the park, um, the fill area that's, is green. Um, and then it actually has a really beautiful manual shaded relief that um, uh, one retired cartographer from the Park Service in this room may have done this, I'm not sure. Uh, and then we fast forward 10 years and actually that, that manual shaded relief was, was replaced with a digital um, relief that's just kind of grayscale in tone with um, the administrative areas still using that kind of standard fill color. Um, you also can see the, the wilderness boundary is is, um, you know, kind of winds along the, the canyon there. And um, it's, there's a lot going on in one really tight area of the map, which kind of can, can um, become a challenge for cartographic reasons. So we fast forward into, uh, this is the map that I kind of conceptually thought of. And um, in recent years, we've started to kind of move into more natural uh, colors in the, our maps and our relief. And, um, this area, just visiting it, you know, you really can get a sense of the place. And, and I, I, my intent here was to really draw readers in to the landscape that they're experiencing through kind of the colors and the tones of the landscape. Um, there, I used uh, NAEP imagery in this um, and national land cover data to reflect the natural environments and natural colors. Um, but it still has, you know, the same uh, Park Service features and identity that, that are kind of tried and true with the Park Service. Um, still have the pictographs that are, you know, ubiquitous throughout. Um, green call-out box for the visitor center uh, and most of the symbology. And then, you know, you, instead of having that green fill area, we just go with kind of a subtle, nice vignette for the boundary. So for that nape imagery, um, this kind of poses some challenges when, when you initially look at it. I just drew in this mosaic of images and then threw the, the park boundary on there so you could 
highlighted and, and the Gunnison River cutting through. But um, there's a couple uh, main areas of concern with this, um, especially the, the dark shadows that make the namesake Black Canyon what it is. I mean, it's, it's such a steep canyon that it perpetually has these really dark cast shadows throughout. Um, and they're also, you know, in any imagery, the light sources from the uh, southwest from, for the most part. And so in most shaded reliefs, you're rendering hill shade from the northwest. So it can kind of pose a problem when you try to overlay this image, your imagery into a hill shade. You also have this really high area of contrast in the bottom left that's kind of this scab land area that's free of vegetation and you know, just in this image alone, that draws my eye in over the, over so the, you know, zooming in on the park where the, the reader should actually be looking. So I'll kind of show you a few ways that we um, mitigated these challenges. Uh, whoops, how did that get in there? No, actually, that's supposed to be in there. Um, <laughs> this is the National Land Cover data set. This is, it looks really kind of gaudy on its own, but um, when used in really subtle, variations, it can really kind of pump up a map and make it look nice. I um, converted some of the colors to mimic the landscape. So you have kind of some of the darker greens are the, the oak, uh, uh, gamble oak and, and pinion, or not pinion, I'm sorry, uh, the pine forests of the area. And then kind of the muddier green is supposed to represent the sagebrush. Um, and ultimately put together, um, and in very subtle forms, it can give you something very aesthetically pleasing. Um, for this, uh, for the park map, and this is a zoomed in area of kind of the, the heart of the park, um, we used just a very little uh, dash of, of nape imagery, a little bit of land cover data, and then um, terrain texture shading from Natural Scene Designer to give it a little bit of extra texture. Um, I also uh, really limited the cast shadows in the canyon because there's so many labels and key features that visitors need to, to see there that um, I thought that, you know, we, instead of clouding things and for the sake of legibility, we'll um, really draw those back. And then also give that canyon a little gradient, uh, hypsometric tint to kind of give it some depth and, and, and life there. So, um, yeah, and then I guess for the other kind of point of concern from the nape imagery, this, this area of high contrast and really eye-grabbing area, I just put a map over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is, um, this is a, a little inset map of kind of the visitor center area, and uh, they, the park, thought that this is something, you know, they were getting a, a park visitation is going through the roof and so they want something to kind of draw visitors in and, and direct them to the resources that are right outside their, the visitor center. Um, and for this map, I uh, originally started with a planimetric, just standard um, uh, map and thought, you know, I'll try to give this thing a little more life and a little more depth to it and so rendered an oblique view in Natural Scene Designer and just use this, the same tools, the same uh, nape imagery and, and land cover to um, kind of mimic the landscape of the park map, but then just really uh, highlight the, the gradient of the canyon. And originally this thing was supposed to be double the extent and then our designer cropped it in. So the, the north rim there isn't as dramatic, but it still gives the viewers the, the feeling that, okay, yeah, you're right on the edge on a lot of these trails. And it also shows the folks that are a little more fear of heights, uh, have a fear of heights that they can go elsewhere, that they don't need to cling to the rock walls. So on this map, there's one thing that was missing from all those previous editions, and can anybody guess what that might be? The wilderness boundary. Um, and it's a pretty big component of the park. Um, and actually, this is something that we're starting to, to leave off the park maps in cases. Um, you know, the wilderness boundaries often follow along kind of distinct ridge lines, and in this case, it follows the canyon rim the whole way. And so, um, and it can kind of just distract from all those other elements. It can distract from the, the natural colors of the landscape that we use. So, um, in, for a solution to that, we just put it in a little box over on the side of the map here. And by doing that, um, it can clearly illustrate where the boundary is um, visitors aren't using this map to get into the wilderness, so they don't need to navigate with it. So it kind of 
gives us a chance to explain you know, what wilderness is to those that don't know, and then give them a chance to also go find more information online. Uh, the last map on this side is kind of the most uneventful, but we'll throw it in there anyways. Um, it's just an, a standard area map that I think was uh, useful before the days of cell phones and mobile wayfinding, um, but we, we still include it. And the, the air, area map, I think in this case, is, is relatively important because Black Canyon has a pretty good partnership with um, the, their neighboring parks or neighboring uh, natural areas, Gunnison Gorge and, and Kiriconte. Um, and so this map just ultimately shows the proximity to those two, um, kind of how to get to regional t nearby towns and things like that, and kind of just tried to spruce it up with a little bit vignette in each one. But um, So jumping over to side one now, um, or, or the other side today, uh, is this kind of 3D graphic that w the park really wanted to convey the, their th theme, which is water. I mean, there's... Gunnison River has cut through this canyon over eons, and it's, it's really impressive, and it needs to be described some way. Um, they came to us and they said, you know, we want to show the geology story too, and is there any way we can do something with these three, you know, kind of old diagrams that we have? And, you know, and so we tried to spruce them up, and for the sake of real estate that we have in the brochure, um, we kind of compromised with this, and it shows just the the overall regional Gunnison water drainage and where the, the, all that water is coming from, from these four nearby mountain ranges and how all that water over time really can pound through and, and turn this canyon out. So to make this, uh, this diagram, I rendered um, a shaded relief in Natural Scene Designer um, and just in imported a digital elevation model uh, kind of pan the camera to look right up the Gunnison River and into the headwaters and um, adjusted the, the light source from straight from the south to kind of illuminate the mountainsides and, and make that canyon area pop. After doing that, um, I uh, rendered a, a terrain texture model in, in Natural Scene Designer that is one of uh, uh, Leland Brown's uh, amazing tools and uh, overlaid that onto the digital elevation model and then just re-rendered the same thing. And together um, with uh, using basically the multiply blending mode in Photoshop of the texture shade over the shaded relief and then doing a few hue adjustment layers and uh, uh, you know isolating the shadows and things and throwing some labels on and some arrows, um, it kind of gives this really beautiful um, scene of, of the landscape and, um, you know, throw a, a few sun glints into the, the reservoir there and into the river and it just kind of makes the thing pop and thought it was, it was really aesthetically pleasing for how kind of simple the design is. Um, and I think the park really enjoyed it too. So um, that's all I have other than the fact that I just want to say, um, you know, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for uh, my mentor and recently retired colleague, Tom Patterson, and uh, he's been super influential on getting me into this point and, and teaching me all these tools and being very patient along the way. So I just want to say thanks, Tom, and I think you should all buy him a beer later for retiring. He's living the good life. <laughs> Okay, we have time for one question. Oh, two. Oh. Okay. It, that's because we liked your presentation oh, better yeah. than Josh's. Sorry. People want to <laughs> <laughs> Any takers? You guys are so amazed. No. You have no questions. <laughs> I've got one over here, and then I'll come back to you. Thanks. Um, so, this map is a little bit different as far as color palettes and kind of the base map from a lot of the other maps in, in the series. Um, did you find that the cyan values for your hydrology was just fine on, on the map as far as standards were concerned, or did you have to kind of finagle it to make the map work? Um, for on, on this map here, or the, 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 the other park map? Side, side one. The main park map? Yeah. Um, on just the river, you mean? Or? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think just, yeah, making, that's a really key component of the park, you know, it, the Gunnison River is part of the name, and so you really want to pop it out and highlight it. Um, it's also something that people don't have access to very easily, so um, it's, it is kind of secondary, and it's, it has to be kind of finagled in behind a lot of other uh, key features and labels and things like that, so um, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Okay, and then I believe we had a hand way in the back. You guys are making me work for these questions. Jeez. One more time. Okay. Thanks. That was some really beautiful relief. Thank um, you. I was just wondering when you get a lot of like hillshades stacked up there, do you have any strategies for masking out when you need to put in labels and points and stuff in those areas? Um, yeah, so I, I think the main strategy that we typically use is isolating the, the shadows and, and highlights. Um, and then there's a way to mask uh, or create a, a subtle um, drop shadow or, or mask below each label to, and, and actually do a levels adjustment within the imagery to kind of or make those labels pop. Um, it, it's kind of hard to explain right here, but I could definitely show you and talk with you later about kind of some of those techniques if you'd like. But yeah, ultimately just playing with the shadows in Photoshop and, and then um, creating some, uh, a, a little mask underneath each label helps a lot. All right, uh, one last round of applause, and for all of our morning speakers. <laughs>